Hi guys, uh, today we're going to look at tying a fly for the mighty Taiman. Uh, this is a, a really big fish that is found in, in Mongolia and Siberia. Uh, and one of the best ways to catch these fish is off the surface. So today we're going to do a gurgler, uh, which is designed to literally pop and gurgle and make lots of commotion on the surface, hopefully attracting in the net big fish. Okay, starting the, the gurgler, uh, we'll take our um, nice heavy, heavy duty thread here. Uh, we want this to be able to really strap down the materials so they're not going to come out of place on the, on the first fish that we hook. Uh, this is a 80 Vivas thread, uh, really strong. Uh, bright orange, I quite like that as a hot spot for the fly uh, when we're fishing it. Uh, so we're putting this on. Uh, this is a nice big 3 0 streamer hook. Um, not too too strong there's a little bit of movement we want this fly to float and, and make a lot of movement on the surface but again not so weak that when we hook that big fish that it's going to to pull out and straighten so laying just a, a small thread wrap there so we've got a nice thread basis there uh, we'll just keep building that up and take it to the back end of the hook now we're going to start to build our, our tail up so here we've got the, the bucktail. I quite like to, to build the tail up with this first. Um, then when we put, we'll put a slightly lighter, softer material on top of this and the bucktail will stop that from wrapping around the hook. Um, so just by separating the fibers, we don't want too much, just enough to really form a solid basis. We'll cut in there. And then we just want to neaten that up and take away any of the smaller juvenile fibers in the bottom. Pair it up with our hook. Okay, and then to trap those fibers in, uh, we pinch it above the hook. Take our thread up, pinch it in between our thumb and forefinger, and just slide it down on top. Before putting too much pressure on, put the second and the third wrap and then we can really tighten down. And the reason we do that is to stop the fibers wrapping around the hook and sitting on the other side. And we can trap those down. Doesn't need to be too neat and tidy, just enough to lock it all in place. Then we're going to go with our second tail material. Uh, this is a nice flashy material. Um, just something to try and pick up a bit more attention uh, from the fish when it's out in, in faster water, uh, anything to just grab their attention other than the, the natural colours that we have of the, of the bucktail. So cutting those strands off there, we'll pair that up. We can then cut it down to size once we've trapped it in. Exactly the same process, pinch, draw down, a couple of tightening turns and then just trap those fibers down. Don't worry about any that are just wrapping around. Uh, this will all be hidden later in the flight. Take our thread back here and then we're just going to cut roughly those excess feathers out, uh, excess fibers out and there we go we've got our nice tail for this. Then um, I prepared earlier two pieces of of craft foam, um, both low in diameter. Uh, we want this to be able to work with them easily, uh, but these are going to create our buoyancy and our, our movement from the fly. So first of all, you'll see I've cut this into a, a V shape in order to aid tying them in. So trap the first one in there, all on top of the hook where this nice strong thread comes into its own. So make sure that's in place. 
and then pair up our second. So we have a brown foam um, with a red foam stepped underneath. And this will show up more towards the end of the fly, um, but this will act as a hot spot at the front end of the fly when we finish. Right, that's all nicely trapped in and secure. What we can do at this point, just to stop any movement, is add a little touch of glue. This will just help secure that foam and that body all in position. So now that we've secured our, our back material in, uh, next we're going to put in the body. This is what's going to give the extra movement when it's swimming through the water and hopefully um, give it that lifelike approach. So we're just taking our thread back over that area of glue that we put in. So we're now just going to take our thread to the back and we're going to trap in our rabbit fur, which is going to give us the bulk for the body. And just by pushing it down towards the end, we can just knit that in with the thread. Make sure it's really nice and secure. And then taking the thread forward, make sure there's not going to be any movement until leave a gap at the front. Uh, this is very important for when you bring the foam forward uh, at the next step. So now all we're going to do is simply stroke the fibre of the rabbit back whilst putting it round, round the shank of the hook. This creates a nice hackle-like look and gives us bulk when the fly is dry and a lot of movement when the air gets into it but it's because of the nature of the material, when it loses the water on the first back cast, it then makes it a very easy fly to, to cast at distance and when you're fishing all day long. So wrapping round after each turn, just stroking those fibres back and you'll see that that body shape is already taking form. This makes it look like any form of rodent or small bird that may have fallen onto the water and got trapped. Make that final turn there, hold it in position, and just take the thread through. By taking the thread diagonally through, don't worry about trapping too many fibers because we can neaten that up. Three or four times we'll get that locked in that way, and then build a second buffer at the front there. That will really make sure all of those materials are secured in. And then just nip out the rabbit fur there. And you'll see that nice profile kicking into shape. Let's tidy it up a fraction more. And then we're going to do our next stage of bringing the foam forward. And see that I'm just parting that. I don't want to trap too many of those rabbit furs. And Pull this forward, leaving a little bit of slack just in the material. So we're now just going to trap that back material in. So just clamping it to the side. And because of the nature of the foam, you can build up a few turns there. And with each turn, you can put more pressure on. There we go. You want to make sure that you've got enough to allow you to fold it back after. But before we do that, we're going to bring in this second piece of foam. Same process again, and this is where that thicker thread comes into its own. You can really put the pressure on. You'll see that nice back shape turning up and We'll fold first piece back, clamping that down. And then you'll see that bright red piece now come into its zone. You'll see a sort of bill shape 
appear at the front. This is what gives the name, uh, gives the fly its name, the gurgler. Because of this nice bill shape on the front, it, it swims and, and gurgles and leaves a bubble line behind it. Once we just tighten all of that up, make sure that you've left enough room to get your leader through. And push that back with your thumbnail. Just trap that in. There's always going to be a little bit of play in the fly, um, but that's not to worry. And we're at this point just going to even up those two tag ends. But you do want to leave them quite long there. Trim that up. And we've got one more material to add in. And I feel this always adds a lot to any streamer material, and that's rubber legs. Very simple way to tie these in. Just take them around the thread and use the weight of the bobbin to pull them into, into place. With this fly, we're going to look to do two legs on each side. So that's the first one in. Tilt that a little bit now so we can use that weight again. Trap that in there. and make sure that you get a couple of turns through the middle of all of those and then you can stroke them back out the way don't worry when we trim them later they'll get more into fashion again just checking that eye this is your last chance to get everything all into the right place and then we're going to go in with the whip finish tool Round and secure it down. And round and secure it down. At this point, we can trim our thread off. We do this by opening a V and just pushing that off. And now that we've trimmed that thread off, all we're going to do is even up those legs a little. Not too much, we want plenty of movement in this fly. This is all about appealing to the aggressive nature of the taman. So once that's done, last thing is just to add a touch more glue. You can do that just by running it through the gaps in the, in the foam there. Let's tilt it over. And add a bit more in there. And there we have it. That is the Tame and Gurgler. And that will hopefully find one or two big fish this coming season. Well, there we are. I hope you enjoyed that video. And if you liked it and want to see more like it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.